Welcome everyone to this week's video update. Today's Friday, December 30th, the last trading day of the year. So hope everybody had a good year learning to trade and look forward to a great new year going forward. Let's jump in and, and take a look at the trades that we made this week starting on, remember the market was closed Monday. So starting on Tuesday, December 27th, we made our first trade of the week and we put on a new iron condor in the soybean future. So let's take a look at soybeans, forward slash ZS. Now remember, the implied volatility indicator does not work on some futures contracts. And even the ETF, the corresponding ETF to soybeans, doesn't give you a reading. So with, with these grains, uh, like soybeans, wheat, corn, these are really things that you just kind of have to monitor on your own to figure out if there's enough juice uh, in the in the options to make it worthwhile and, and putting on these premium selling strategies. So if we if we take a look at where we're at in soybeans, so we've got we've got two different iron condors on. This is the original one that we put on. And as you can see, price has moved down here. Uh, hasn't breached our break even, so we're still holding that, and that's in the February cycle which currently has 28 days to go. So we've got a lot of time. We could either make an adjustment if it keeps moving down, or we can, um, you know, if it moves up, obviously take that off for a profit. So we'll continue to monitor that. And what I like to do is, is once price moves out of the center, if it moves, you know, into a, a range on the downside or range to the upside, a lot of times I like if IV still permits, I like to add on another position to collect more credit and, and gives our, give ourselves a chance to be right. Now, if you look at the profit line, it shows that we're down about $175 on this trade. However, remember, soybean markets are closed. They close at 115 or 130. And so a lot of times that profit line is going to be inaccurate. So we're right at about break even on this trade at this point. So we'll continue to monitor that. Next trade we made was a, an opening adjusting trade in FXY. So we sold another strangle in FXY. So if we take a look at where we're at, here's the original one that we had on. That's still in the January cycle. The January cycle has about 21 days to expiration. So we've got some time there. So what we're doing here is we're really just continuing to let this theta decay hoping that the price stays in a fairly narrow range. If we get any kind of a contraction in IV, I'll most likely take this off uh, next week. So it, with, with the adjustment, it, it shows we're down at uh, a little over $300 on this trade, but that's not taking into account the adjusted um, roll that we already did. So we're, we're at almost break even on this trade here. And then uh, in the alerts, the trade that I just added on was another strangle. So again, we collect more credit, widen out our break evens, give ourselves a chance to, to make some more money on FXY. Next trade we looked at was a closing trade in TLT. So this was an iron condor that we had on TLT. So we closed that out for a nice profit. If we take a look at TLT, at the charts, you can see uh, IV is, con you know, we got that contraction uh, here, which allowed us to take that off for a nice profit. IV is creeping back up currently at 67. And so we also have uh, this other iron condor on that we'll continue to monitor, but not really any profit or loss on that trade at this point. So going on, moving on to the, to the next trade here, uh, sold a straddle in XLF. So if we take a look at XLF, we've got a couple positions on here. So we've got the, we've got this straddle here where you see prices moved up. And so what we did here is instead of, instead of rolling up our put, we simply, because there's so much time left, I simply wanted to get more, more of a position on an XLF. So I added another XLF straddle and I did that in the February cycle. So you can see we've got a straddle above price We've got a straddle below price, and so we'll continue to monitor and manage that. 
If we get a move up and, and implied volatility contracts, we'll take that off for a profit. If it declines, we'll take the other one off and then continue to monitor these back and forth. Uh, so XLF, if you look at where the IV is currently, still around 47, so not bad. Uh, so we'll, you know, if we get a contraction there, we'll, we'll hopefully look to manage one or both of those for a profit. Uh, we bought an iron condor back, a closing trade in SPY. So we closed that out for a nice profit. Uh, SPY, uh, we don't have a current position on uh, because IV was so low. You know, we, we took those off when implied volatility contracted, took those off for a nice profit. With the last few days having this down move in the overall market, you know, implied volatility is spiking back up. So if we can get a couple more down days next week, uh, we could get a, you know, even more of a spike in implied volatility. That'll be a great opportunity to put on new positions. And hopefully we can take advantage of that next week, assuming uh, implied volatility stays high for us. So we'll wait to see what happens there. GDX, uh, we closed out our GDX uh, strangle for a nice profit. Uh, this was, a, this was a, a really cool trade, which I'll probably do a video specifically on this as kind of a... a an anatomy of this whole trade as we as we walk through it but this is one where we entered our original strangle back on 11 8 so november 8th we had to make three different adjustments we rolled the calls we rolled to the next month we added another position uh, we took that off for profit all together we made a really nice profit in gdx all together so if we take a look at at gdx you know back on 11 8 right here is where we put on our original uh, trade and then applied volatility went down, but then it spiked back up. Uh, we had a big move down. We had to roll down our calls. We ended up putting on another, uh, we ended up rolling out to the next expiration cycle somewhere around here. And then when applied volatility spiked up again, we put on another position. It contracted right away, took that off for a profit. And then you see price move back up. And on this day, we took off everything uh, for a really nice profit. Now, Applied volatility has since spiked back up, and if it gets over 50, we will look to put on another GDX position potentially next week. So stay tuned for that. FXE, uh, we bought a strangle. We had this on for 15 days. Uh, IV basically didn't contract too much, uh, but it, but as time passed over 15 days, we were able to take that off for about a 30% of max profit in FXE. So if you take a look at what is going on in FXE, you know, implied volatility is kind of staying high. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in the currencies right now, giving us good opportunity to put trades on. And so we took that one off, that we took one of the strangles off for a nice profit, and we added on just today a butterfly. Now, my course is not available yet on butterflies. I'm hoping to, to finalize things and get it completed here in the next couple months. And, and so you'll, you'll have a better idea about how to do this, but essentially look at this. I mean, if, if you look at the graph, essentially what that mirrors is if, if you put on an iron condor where the short strikes are at the exact same strike, that, that kind of looks exactly like what a butterfly is from the, from the visual graph perspective. So it's defined risk. So the most we can lose on this trade is $465. And that's if you're doing three contracts. Uh, but we collect a large credit. So our, our break-evens, our range is more narrow than a typical iron condor or strangle, but we collect a lot more credit. So we got a lot more profit potential and we look to manage these quicker. So the other way, the other way you can look at this is it's a straddle with defined risk, okay? So we like to put these on Remember, IV, uh, strangles and iron condors, we, we want to put those on when, when IV is over 50. With these, we can, a lot of times, we'll do a more narrow range, like a butterfly or a straddle, when, when implied volatility is over 70. So you can see the implied volatility percentiles at 79 right now. So that's why it's set up well for a butterfly, and that's why I chose this over an iron condor or a strangle. You could have done either one. Um, it, it's always good to mix up your strategies. And so in this case, it's set up well for a butterfly and that's why we chose to put that trade on uh, for this trade. So continue to monitor that. Hopefully if, if price stays in a narrow range and we get a contraction in IV, we'll take that off for a profit. So we'll continue to uh, send out alerts on monitoring FXE. 
GLD, uh, closing trade, we bought back an iron condor. Uh, IV was at 25 at that point when we bought it back. If we look at GLD, so that was, we had two iron condors on and, and we, took, we took this one off that was over here. It was more on this side, excuse me, on the, uh, more closer to this side as far as the range goes. So we took that one off for a nice profit. Now we still have this other GLD on. If we get a, if we get a nice move down, we'll take this one off for a profit. If implied volatility kind of gets above 30 or 40, you know, or obviously higher, we'll look to put another iron condor on to kind of widen out that range. And, and get it a little bit more centered. But for now, we're just gonna leave this one on and continue to monitor that. Uh, next trade was a opening trade in IWM. So IV percentile got up to around 48, uh, and that was yesterday that we put that trade on on Thursday. Uh, so 48, you know, close, close to 50. So we went ahead and put on that uh, iron condor in IWM. So you can see we're just a little bit in the profit here, still very centered on our graph. Nothing to do but, but wait on IWM. And like I said, if these other indices like SPY and, and the Qs and IWM, if, if they continue to fall, that's gonna push IV up, giving us more opportunity to put, to put more trades on. So, we'll, so stay tuned for that next week. Uh, yesterday, Thursday, again, we, put, we bought back a strangle in Natty Gas for a nice profit. So we, we were still holding uh, another natural gas position on. So actually, let me go to, so this was our previous iron condor. Uh, you can see this was an, uh, excuse me, adjusted str strangle, this is a strangle. And, and you can see price has been moving down the last couple days. So we're at a nice profit of over $600 on this trade, I'd like to see a little bit more of a move down and take this off for, for a good size profit. Uh, but if it doesn't, we'll continue to, to monitor and manage that one. So that one's got 21 days left to expiration, excuse me, 27 days left to expiration. So still a lot of time left. Uh, in conjunction with that, we put on another strangle in natural gas in the March cycle, which has 55 days to expiration. Remember, we always wanna put these on between 30 and 60 days. Uh, that's the that's the sweet spot where you get your best bang for your buck. So if we look at our our uh, uh, the new strangle that we put on on Thursday, you can say you can see we just put this on, got a little bit of profit, uh, but we'll continue to monitor and manage that. I already mentioned the butterfly in FXE. I already mentioned the new strangle we just sold Thursday in uh, natural gas. And then the last trade, which we did today on Friday, was we bought back, we closed out our straddle that we had in SLV. So let's take a look at SLV. And we have no position on there. You can see we put this on uh, 15 days ago uh, and we had a nice contraction the last few days in IV, gave us a nice chance to take that off for about a 25% uh, profit, which is what we want to manage those straddles at. So great trade. So let's look at some of these other trades that we've got on. We've got XRT, which is the retail ETF. You can see that's a strangle, still pretty centered in, in a little bit of profit there. We'll continue to wait and monitor that. We take a look at XLU. We've got, we've still got this adjusted strangle. It's just been hanging out here up kind of near our break even point to the upside. Um, you know, we're, we're at a position where we're either going to need to roll up our put to collect more credit or look to potentially, you know, with this, with this trade next week, it's got 21 days to expiration. The next cycle has got 49. So next week, if it continues to hang around that same spot, we'll probably just roll it all out to the February cycle, collect more credit, widen our break evens, give us, give us more time to be right on that trade. Uh, we could theoretically, the other option would be to just take this off. Uh, we're, you know, with the adjustments, with the rolls and the additional credit we've collected, we're in the profit. Uh, shows at about $18, but with the other roll, we've, we're, we're up, you know, over a hundred bucks on the trade. So we could theoretically just take it off if we wanted. Um, if it depends really on what, what's going on with XLU as far as implied volatility goes. 
you know, with it, at 47, you know, that's still a decent range to keep that position on. If, if implied volatility was really low, like under 20, I would simply just take off the trade because it's, it's not worth keeping on because the risk of implied volatility spiking and hurting our position um, isn't, isn't worth the risk. But in this case, you know, still, still a decent range, still some de decent premium in there. If we get a contraction and a move down, we'll take that off for a nice profit. XLF, uh, we already went over that one. TLT went over, SPY, SPX. This is a trade that we've had this calendar on for some time now. Remember, we originally put on the 2205 and price came out and breached our break even. So we added on another calendar like I teach in my course as the adjustment. So now we've got this double calendar on. SPX has since moved down. It's, it's extremely centered, but we want more profit. You know, we're up about $175 on the trade, but we want to continue to let that theta decay. And this, uh, this spike that we're seeing in implied volatility is helping our position. So remember, we put this calendar on when implied volatility is low, we want implied volatility to spike, and that benefits a calendar position. So it's just not enough profit to take off yet, so we'll give that some more time and potentially take that off next week. Same exact thing in the queues. So we've got this calendar here. Uh, it's coming close to our break even. If it, if it gets to our break even and we're at a break even on our profit or, uh, or profitable, I'll most likely just take that off. Uh, because implied volatility has spiked so much, don't necessarily want to put on another calendar. I like to put on the calendars when implied volatility is low. If it's way up here, I'm not probably going to look to put on another calendar. I'll just take this off for a small profit. Uh, so we'll continue to send out alerts and monitor that next week. Lulu, uh, Lululemon, we've got this uh, iron condor on. Remember, Lulu is not on my iron condor watch list. However, because of the activity going on in Lulu right now and implied volatility staying high, even after earnings, implied volatility only dropped into the 60 level. Right now it's currently at 66. So good trading vehicle. The, the spreads are extremely tight. So if you look at the at the money spreads, you know we're at three cents, uh, which is which is very tight. And there and there's a lot of open interest, a lot of volume. So it's been a great trading vehicle. I'm not going to put it on my uh, watch list because sometimes these these stocks come in and out of favor, and I only want stocks on my watch list that are that always have that liquidity, always have that volume. Uh, but from time to time, these stocks will come into play, and so that's that's why we are trading Lulu. Goldman Sachs. If we take a look at Goldman, we've got this iron condor on. We've had have on we've had on for a couple weeks now. Uh, implied volatility has contracted a little bit. Well, it did contract, and then it's it's crept back up. But price has kind of stayed in a steady range after this huge move up in the financials, and and so we're we're just continuing to let that decay. Uh, if we get a little bit of a move down and some more decay, we'll we'll take that off for a nice profit. Uh, let's see what else do we have? No 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 position in EWW, no position in bonds. We went over. Oh, the last one would be oil. So forward slash CL. This position has has been a little bit of a, a pain. We've we've adjusted this twice, but oil continue to make you know really big move up. So we've rolled our puts up twice. Uh, implied volatility is so low, so that's why I'm hesitant to put on another strangle to widen out our break evens here. Right now, we're just can, we're we're already inverted, so we've got uh, 21 days left. Excuse me, 18 days left in oil in this position. So we'll wait for either a down move in oil to get out, or if we don't get that, uh, sometime next week we will look to roll that from the February to the March cycle, collect more credit, widen our break-evens, and give ourselves more time to be right. So I hope that was helpful. Everybody have a great weekend. Look forward to the new year, uh, great trading next year. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the members forum right here. I've created this forum to help try to create some synergy so that I can answer your questions. Other members might be able to jump in and, and help answer any questions you have as well. So. Happy trading. We'll talk to you next week.